I've been working in the field of de novo genome sequence assembly for uh, some time now in the, uh, within the Bureau Lab at the Genome Sciences Center at the Cancer Agency. And we work on assembling genomes from reads, primarily from short reads. So the talk I'm going to be giving today is about uh, finding and correcting misassemblies in assembly, so where the, where the assembly has gone wrong, and particularly using linked reads. Technology from Tennis Genomics. So, linked reads are a relatively new data type, and I find it to be quite an interesting data type. It, uh, similar to long read sequencing, it uses high molecular weight DNA as the input. So, these are single molecules of DNA up to you know 100 kilobases long. So, big long DNA, and it is a library prep protocol upstream of Illumina sequencing such that all the reads that come from a single large molecule of DNA all have the same barcode. So that when you do your sequencing afterwards, you can tell which reads came from the same large molecule. So you can kind of think this of this uh, in a way as like the paired end sequencing that you might be accustomed to. You get two reads, one from each end of a one kilobase molecule, except that instead of the, the molecule being kilobase, Instead of getting one read from each end, about 100 reads distributed uniformly across that molecule. So this technology has a number of applications. Uh, some notable ones are the ability to call variants and segmental duplications, which is tip difficult with uh, standard Illumina reads because the reads multi-map and you can't tell where they came from. Uh, identifying structural variants and also phasing variants because all of the linked reads came from the same molecule of DNA, they're naturally from the same haplotype. So you can use this to phase variants over large distances, which is important for, um, you know, assessing the effect of mutations um, to, uh, to disease phenotype. So there's a number of uh, software tools out to use linked reads already. Uh, from 10X Genomics, the company themselves, they have their long ranger uh, suite of tools for reference-based analysis as well as their supernova software for de novo assembly. There's also open source tools for starting calling, as well as uh, scaffolding, which is one step of the genome assembly pipeline. And from uh, our lab, from the Bureau lab, uh, we have a tool called ARCS for scaffolding genomes. That works quite well. And we're doing a lot of research on other applications. Um, one of my colleagues, Justin Chu, is working on assembling the sequence of that of each large molecule by using the reads that come from that molecule as well as recruiting reads from other molecules that overlap that molecule. Uh, that's important because the coverage of one molecule, the sequencing depth of coverage of one molecule from 10x data is actually sub 1x. So um, you can't just assemble a single molecule. You have to recruit reads from other nearby molecules to do that. So in de novo genome sequence assembly, when a contig comes to an end, it's typically for one of four reasons. Because you've reached a large repeat, a repeat that's larger than your library size, uh, because there's a gap in sequencing, or uh, possibly due to large scale heterozygous variation, like structural variation, or, um, uh, or just due to a misassembly, putting the wrong two reads together. So particularly in a highly contiguous assembly, um, I think misassemblies are a big limiting factor in how contiguous an assembly can be. Normally we think of uh, misassemblies effect as, as being, you know, the correctness of the assembly, like how accurate it is, but it actually affects, cont uh, limits contiguity as well. And I'll show that, I'll show that here with this little figure. Um, let's say you're trying to assemble a genome that has two chromosomes. The chromosomes here are labeled in yellow and blue. And you've got it down to three contigs and you're trying to scaffold this to, get, to bring it down to one contig per chromosome. Now, no amount of scaffolding is going to fix this situation when you have that misassembly there between the yellow and the blue. So first we have to correct, correct that misassembly by breaking that yellow-blue chimeric contig into its two correct components. And once you've done that, now you can scaffold the assembly and finish it and put the yellow on the yellow and with the yellow with the yellow and the blue with the blue. But as long as you have that misassembled contig in your assembly, you're never gonna get to that point. So 
So the tool uh, I've developed to, to tackle this problem is called Tickmint. Um, the basic idea behind it is that you look at uh, the depth of coverage across your assembly, but not of the reads, not of the read depth of coverage, but of the physical molecule depth of coverage. So from the alignments of the reads and the barcodes, which indicate the molecule they came from, you infer the uh, extents of the molecule. Right, so now you're looking at, like, if you're looking at IGV, and I'll show screenshots later, instead of each bar representing a read, an aligned read, it now represents an aligned molecule, so, you know, of tens or hundreds of kb. Now you look at the depth of coverage of all these molecules and uh, look at all the molecules that uh, support or refute, basically, each position of the assembly. And then based on this information, it um, identifies potential locations of misassemblies. So this is a plot of, this is what the data looks like. This is what the algorithm interprets. Um, the top track there is the physical molecule depth of coverage. And where there's a, a big dip is a position of a potential misassembly. Now that dip actually covers a large region. So the misassembly could be anywhere in there. So within that region, you look for uh, clipped read alignments at the ends of the molecules. So if the molecule ends, well, the molecule's gonna end at a read, but if the read happens to be, you know, soft clip, if you're by the alignment software, then that's an indication that there might be an assembly at that very base position. So looking, and looking for multiple of these molecules at the same position helps you refine the position of the misassembly down to a base pair accurate position. This is another way of looking at the same data, but in the interest of time, I'll skip it. I gave this talk originally for a longer time slot at ISMB. So here's, a, here's another really cool way of looking at the data, because uh, I like graphs and it's very visual. Um, if you take your assembly and you break it up into um, 10 kilobase chunks, so each contig, you break it up into a tiling path of 10 kilobase chunks. And that, each of those chunks is one of the vertex, vertices in this graph. And you look for an enrichment of barcodes between any two chunks. And uh, wherever you find such an enrichment, enrichment, you create an edge. And now all the vertices here are colored by the contig that they originally came from. Yeah, so the, the segments that they put together. But which segments came from, other than the coloring, which segments came from the same scaffold? are not told at all to this algorithm of looking for enrichment. So all the, so all the positions um, where you see adjacent of the same color, that's where the barcodes are recapitulating what the assembly software said, and that's a good thing. And you can see in this example, and this is a real example, um, by and large, they all agree. All the, um, all the colors are the same in a contiguous segment of the graph. And, but you see occasional places where there's an edge connecting two segments of different colors, and each of those is a potential misassembly or something you might want to look into further. So there's all sorts of different ways an assembly can go wrong. Um, Tigment right now can identify uh, translocations, so when two things that should be in different parts of the genome are put together, and can identify deletions, because both of those result in a uh, drop in apparent physical molecule coverage. Uh, three other types of misassemblies, um, an insertion of the wrong sequence, an inversion, or a collapsed repeat, each of those actually result in an increase in apparent uh, molecule physical coverage. Um, so that's something we could potentially find as well just by looking for that uh, atypical increase in coverage, but right now we're just looking for dips in coverage. So here's uh, an IGV screenshot of what this actually looks like. So the top track is the uh, physical molecule coverage and then the bottom track is the reads. And one thing that I think jumps, that is really apparent and important is that the, even though the, the, read co the, the, coverage, the read coverage is very wobbly, not very consistent, and the, phys the physical molecule coverage is quite consistent and smooth. The, why that's important is that the dips really jump out. Um, there's less, because there's less variability where it's, where it's different, it becomes, it's really easy to find those differences. It's less so easy in the read coverage. So here's three misassemblies, and they all have this same pattern. Big drop off in physical molecule coverage at the site of a misassembly. And you can see how all the molecules starts stack up right there at the cursor in the middle. And that helps you identify the, the base pair accurate coordinate of where that misassembly is. 
So this is a way of visualizing this assemblies that I like that our, my uh, colleague Justin Chu came up with. And we're kind of, we, call it, we call them Jupiter plots because they kind of look like the planet Jupiter. So uh, the segments on the left of the circle uh, are the chromosomes in the reference genome. And the gray segments on the right are, are, the, are an assembly, context of an assembly. And every arc from the left to the right is an alignment identified by BWA. And where you see big thick bands of the same color is where the assembly agrees with the reference genome. And where you see arcs that are kind of higgledy-piggledy and going off in some strange direction is a, uh, a translocation and, and likely a misassembly because we're not expecting, this isn't a cancer sample, so we're not expecting this many translocations or any. So this is the uh, assembly before running Tigman. And after running Tigman, a number of these misassemblies, these translocations are corrected. And if by adjusting uh, parameters to make it more sensitive, we can eliminate even more of these misassemblies. And eventually, all of the misassemblies, all of these translocations are eliminated. So the tool is working well. Um, we also did it on a Sitka spruce mitochondrial genome assembly. Uh, so I think that I think the organelles of uh, trees are kind of interesting and unusual because the mitochondrial the mitochondrial genome of uh, spruce trees is five or six megabases. So it's the size of an entire like prokaryote genome. <laughs> in an organelle. Um, so uh, originally this assembly was in 16 scaffolds with an N50 of about half a meg. And after running Tigment to correct misassemblies and ARCs to re-scaffold, uh, we improved that uh, the N59 fold from half a megabase to four megabases. And most of the genome now is in a single four meg contig. So uh, that's everything I have to present today. Um, so there's a little time remaining, I think. Um, if anybody had any questions for me, I could answer them now, or you can find me at the pizza session afterward. Um, the software is online, uh, links up here on the screen, and these slides are also online as well. So thank you for your attention.